Hudson Motor Car Company was founded in 1909, and among the founders was Roy Chapin, who had gotten his start with Ransom Olds in the old auto works. Over the years, Hudson developed some pretty important models, including the Essex in the early 1920s, which is generally considered the first affordable closed car, and kind of shifted American car buyers from uh, open touring cars to enclosed vehicles. And in the 30s, during the Depression, they introduced the Terraplane. The Hudson Hornet was a fabulous car, pun intended, of the early 1950s. It used what Hudson called step-down design. This was a revolution in their styling in the post-World War II period. It was a great car, the all-around package. It was attractively priced, it was beautifully styled, it handled very well, and it also performed pretty well, too. It had a six-cylinder engine, 308 cubic inches, about 145 horsepower, and the price was somewhere around $2,500 reasonably affordable by the standards of the day. Hudson was in a pretty tight spot in the early 1950s. They certainly didn't have the development budget of a General Motors, a Ford, or a Chrysler. They looked at NASCAR racing. NASCAR had just been formed a few years before in 1948. It really kicked off there in the post-war era. The Hudson story coming into that, it's just so rich in in representing that era. And this was before the big three, GM, Ford, or Chrysler, had really gotten involved officially in NASCAR, so Hudson kind of had the field open to itself. This underdog who's just fighting to stay alive, they recognized that there was a real potential, you know, this win on Sunday, sell on Monday, and no one else was in the game yet. They were able to have this massive competitive advantage. The Hudson Hornets absolutely dominated NASCAR racing starting in 51, but especially the 52, 53, 54 seasons. In fact, I think the overall record for Hudson Hornets had them entering 108 different NASCAR Grand National events. And of those 108 events, they won 66 of them. It's this perfect combination of things that could have only happened in that era. You have the post-war car boom, you have NASCAR and stock car racing really taking off. They're off. A slip now among the leaders might pile up the entire field. And this car comes along and it's, you know, wasn't built by Hudson to be a race car. They were just trying to come out with something fresh and something that could compete with the big three and it happened to be a great race car. The Hudson was at the right place at the right time. It had the right ingredients to uh, really take off. Of course, as people were reading about the races in the papers, they were connecting the Hudson name with victory and with success. Hornet sales doubled between the 1953 and 1954 model years. This car was raced by Herb Thomas. Thomas's number 92 is real performance. Driving smoothly and steadily, he maintains relentless pressure on the front runner. We got this car in 1952, supplied to him by the Hudson Motor Car Company, uh, kind of mid-season, and raced it through 1952. Herb Thomas was uh, one of the early successful NASCAR drivers, and like a lot of drivers, he came out of the South. He was a tobacco farmer and uh, kind of got involved in, in racing as a hobby to begin with. Herb Thomas was kind of a self-taught driver, and he was really, really just like a natural talent. And Thomas is on his way. The first guy that really raced Hudson's was a gentleman named Marshall Teague out of Daytona, Florida. And Marshall saw how good Herb was, and he got Herb in a Hudson in 51, and Herb just started winning and winning and didn't stop winning until about 55, 56. He won over 40 races in his career. He has the highest win percentage of any racer in NASCAR history to this day. And most of it, he did behind the wheel of a Hudson Hornet. We really don't know if there are any other Hudson Hornet race cars out there. The fact that it survives at all is remarkable. Some of the earliest stock cars, they would you know, literally be drawn from a dealer's stock. They'd race a few times and then get sold at a dealership. Uh, other cars, of course, just got wrecked or um, you know, their history was lost over the years. The fact that we can trace this one 
as a real NASCAR used Hudson Hornet. And, and to our knowledge, it's the only surviving Hudson Hornet from that era. It's just really remarkable. I hope when people see this car, they'll look at it and think about the true history of, of these vehicles. It means so much more, you know, to understand our past, to, to see these artifacts that are part of what has built the cultural fabric of this country and everybody can connect with a great story. It just so happens that every car seems to have this great story.